Those nice people over at Hildebrand were probably like, some geek is moaning on YouTube about the glow display not supporting local access. I'll release this firmware update straight away so as his video is out of date. That'll show him. Yeah, that's probably exactly how it went. Or the cynic in me suspects that this might have something to do with Octopus launching their new Octopus Home Mini CAD, which basically does the same thing as glow. Hildebrand now quickly needed a way to differentiate their product and local MQTT access is that feature. Setting up local access is really easy, assuming you've already configured the Mosquito Broker add-on in Home Assistant. I've gone over that in other videos so I won't show you that again, but to recap, find Mosquito Broker in the add-on store and install with the default options. To configure the CAD it's pretty easy, you just open the menu, choose metering and MQTT. Uh, you enter the IP address of your MQTT broker at the top or home assistant server. Um, I suggest you leave the topic as glow uh, and then type in your MQTT credentials which can be the same as your home assistant logon if you want. Then you tap the save button and just wait until right up at the top it says connected which can take a, a few seconds. Um, then you'll need to get the uh, device's serial number which is the same as the MAC address. You can get this by going back to the menu choosing display and details and it's this Mac line right at the top. Um, just remove all the colons as uh, so you've just got a 12 character string and that'll be your serial number that you'll need for later on. Testing is easy. Go to your Home Assistant integrations page and click on the configure button for MQTT. Down in the section that says listen to a topic, you want to type something along the lines of this that I'm showing on the screen now, only replace your device ID with the MAC address of your device. Click on the start listening button and after a few seconds you should see some JSON data appear. If that works, then it's time to move on to creating some sensors in Home Assistant. Since my last video on Glow, Home Assistant has actually changed the way that MQTT sensors are defined. Instead of adding them in the sensor section with a platform type of MQTT, you use the dedicated MQTT section. Now, credit for these sensor definitions goes to Robert Alexa on the Home Assistant forums. I'll put a link to his post in the description, and I have changed them slightly to meet my needs, um, because I like the power output values to be in watts and not kilowatts. Now, that matches all of my other power sensors. If you want kilowatts, follow Robert's configuration. If you want watts, then have a look at this instead. Uh, I've also added in some entities to capture exported energy readings too. This is a copy of my actual configuration, but with the MAC address removed for now. I have a sensor defined for live power, um, but as you can see, I multiply the value by a thousand and then round it to the nearest whole number uh, because I prefer it in watts rather than kilowatts. Uh, then I've got a couple of entities for smart meter energy imported and energy exported. Then there's this gas meter import and interestingly I could only previously get my gas reading in me uh, cubic meters but now I can only get it in kilowatt hours. You can also get the uh, instantaneous gas power reading. Uh, I'm not too sure how useful this, going, this is going to be because um, it tends to be averaged over 30 minutes which is a bit of a restriction with the meter itself. And finally, these last few entities are all about getting your uh, tariff details. So you can see I can get the unit rate and the standing charge rate at any moment in time, which is great for tracking your energy costs in the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. Uh, Robert, as I mentioned before, has got some even better examples of sensors which will keep track of your cumulative costs. I won't repeat those here because I don't personally make use of them uh, at the moment, but you should really go and check them out on his forum post. And there we have it. Hildebrand are listening and have turned a good product into a fantastic product with just a firmware upgrade. Time to moan again a bit though. Well, what would make this better? An ethernet port. The CAD is Wi-Fi only and I would love a hardwired version to reduce the congestion on my Wi-Fi network. I'm told that the new CAD without a display that they are launching soon will have an ethernet port on it for that very reason. But that's something that they can't fix on the display version with a firmware update sadly. Maybe for their second generation display. Just a suggestion?
Anyway, I'll put my configuration up on my website and link to that down in the description. If you like this video, then please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos in the future. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.